How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we take a look at iOS 17.4 and all the new changes and features found within. If you appreciate in-depth videos like this, be sure to subscribe and thumbs up to let others know that it's legit. So let's have a look at what's new in iOS 17.4. So iOS 17.4 is here and it comes with lots of new changes and features, not just limited to the EU regulation stuff. No, we're talking lots of new changes and features for all users. First of all, let's mosey on over to settings and general and about. And you can see the version number 17.4 and you see that build number, which is 21E217. Now, if you're upgrading to 17.4, you'll find a new hello screen. Well, it's not new, but it's been slightly updated to include a profile picture right above the text that says hello in the various languages. Now, this picture doesn't have any sort of function. There are no user profiles or anything like that, but still nice change. Now, there are several new emoji characters in 17.4, including this mushroom, not the Mario looking mushroom, but this ugly looking mushroom there. There's also the Phoenix, there's a lime, and there's also the breaking chains. And then there's the nodding of the head or the shaking of the head left for no and up and down for right. So here's a, a more up close and personal look at some of these new emoji characters, including that mushroom and Phoenix, the lime and the breaking chains, so random, <laughs> and the nodding of the head or the shaking of the head. So definitely not the strongest batch of emoji that we have seen, but I do like these two here. And iOS 17.4 actually includes 18 additional emoji characters, but they're probably not exactly what you were thinking. So up until now, these full body emojis were only pointed to the left. There, there was no right facing full body emojis that you see here until 17.4. So you see it here, you see them going left. You also see the option to go right. So there are 18 different emojis that are pointed towards the, or headed towards the right instead of the left, basically mirroring the options that were already there in previous versions that only pointed left. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's a pretty good improvement. And there's a new city digital clock widget. So, oh, my screen is horribly scratched. <laughs> uh, just ignore that, wow. Definitely get screen protectors, folks. But anyway, City Digital is a brand new clock widget for 17.4. Previously, you had City options, but they were only the analog variety. So here's the regular digital clock. You can see no edit options for the widget there, but on the City Digital Clock, you can see Edit Widget, which allows you to specify a specific city. And in 17.4, the podcast app gets full episode text transcripts, and I can show you how to do that. But first of all, Overtime is my new podcast with Fernando. Be sure to subscribe to that. Every single week we have a new episode. But if you go and select View Transcript when clicking the ellipsis button, you can see the full transcript of the show. Now, this is automatically generated. You can, of course, search that transcript as well. But what's even cooler is the Apple Podcast transcripts that appear on the nail playing screen. And it's similar to viewing lyrics in Apple Music, except here, uh, it's the full transcript of the podcast episode. And you can see it actually moves along as you speak or as the host speaks, you can see everything that they say. And you can easily skip ahead just by tapping on a block of text like this or go back or whatever the case may be, it's pretty cool. And as you scroll, you'll notice how the uh, text gets small and then it zooms back in, really cool effect. And you'll also see the various chapters, so that can make it even easier to skip around and get to exactly what you're looking for. So in this episode of Overtime, you can see I have a chapter called iOS 17.4 Beta 4. Uh, but what's also cool is if you skip ahead 30 seconds or skip back 15 seconds, you can see it actually skips in real time on the transcript. And even if you change up the speed of the podcast, you can see that speed adjust to how the words are highlighted on the transcript. This is a super cool feature and I'm really kind of amazed at how accurate the uh, transcription is. It, they've gotten really good at that. You can also search as well right within this transcript and jump around to the various areas of the show where those search terms are mentioned. And one subtle change to the podcast app, you'll notice that the Listen Now tab has been renamed Home, which in my opinion is a great change. Uh, it just makes a lot more sense that way to have a home tab. And the Shazam music recognition integration that happens when you ask Siri what song is playing, 
that's been updated as well. So I asked Siri, what song is playing? Here's the result. You see where you can open in Apple Music, but now you get this little ellipsis in the upper right-hand corner. So now you can open, you can add to your music library or add to a playlist directly from the song recognition interface. So that's really cool. You can even remove an item from your library as well. So here's how it used to look. There was no sort of ellipsis button in the upper right-hand corner on 17.3.1, but you do get it on 17.4. And the music app, just like the podcast app, has replaced the Listen Now tab with the Home tab, which again, in my opinion, makes a lot more sense that way. So here's how it used to look, Listen Now, and now we have the Home tab. And music recognition doesn't just affect the music app, but also Apple Music Classical. So I asked what song was playing, and it is Chopin, or Chopin, as I like to call it to annoy my friends. But here you see opening classical, looks very similar to the music recognition, so when I tap the ellipsis, now you have the option to open in classical along with Apple Music, etc. So nice change for classical music fans. And on the lock screen, you'll notice the song title when switching songs has a new animation. So here's how it used to look. It literally was just a like a jump cut to the next song, right? But here on 17.4, watch what happens. I'm going to go to the end and you'll notice a sleek little animation for the title. Very subtle, but I think it looks better. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section if you like that little subtlety. So again, there he goes. I love little things like that. And in 17.4, the assistant can announce messages in any supported language. I'm not going to say the name, so I won't wake up your assistant. But here you can see messaging with the assistant. And here in 17.3.1, automatically send messages. So a brand new panel in 17.4 which actually contains the automatically send messages toggle there. But below that is the interesting part, read messages. So the assistant will also read messages using the languages in this list. This will not change the primary language that the assistant listens to and responds in, but it will read back the message in the appropriate language. Stolen device protection received an update in 17.4. So you get a redesign area in face ID and passcode settings its own little panel. Whereas before, stolen device protection was basically just a toggle right there in the root of the face ID and passcode settings, but now it gets its own dedicated panel, which allows you to increase the security of stolen device protection based on location. So here, because I'm not in a familiar location, it institutes a one hour delay before it allows me to change anything important like a passcode or password. Uh, so that security delay is there to beef up the security, but that only works in previous versions when away from familiar locations. But here in 17.4, you can force it to institute that delay always. So no one can like steal your phone and go to your house and then use that familiar location to unlock. It's not a perfect solution, but it's nice to have the option. Battery health is decoupled from charging optimization in 17.4. So if you go to settings battery, you see battery health, has its own section and charging optimization has its own section. Whereas previously battery health and charging were all combined in the same section. So I definitely prefer this update. Now what's also cool is that it gives you battery health status similar to your Mac. Uh, so you get battery health at the top. You see where it says normal. Otherwise it may say something like uh, needs attention or uh, you know, service required. If it's normal, you're good. So that just makes it easy. But here's another thing. Apple recently updated its guidance on battery cycles for the iPhone 15 lineup. So now instead of retaining 80% capacity at 500 cycles, Apple says the iPhone 15 lineup can retain capacity at up to 1000 cycles. And you'll find additional handy battery data within settings battery that includes cycle count. Uh, not just cycle count though, you also have your manufacturer date and the first use date for the battery. So this is all interesting details to help lend context to the overall state of your battery. And Apple has added a passkey access for web browsers within settings, privacy, and security. So if you go there and you scroll down, you'll see passkeys access for web browsers. So this may have something to do with the third party web browsers or the third party engines that are soon to come based on the EU legislation. I don't know that for sure, but that's just a guess. 
And now Apple Cash gets virtual card numbers, which allows you to use Apple Cash to make secure online purchases with Safari autofill when Apple Pay is not available. So on iOS 17.3, when you go into your card number details, you only see what you see there on the left screen. But here, when I go into the card number details on 17.4, you can see you get a new virtual card number option, which is not the same as just the Apple Pay card number that allows you to identify transactions on older versions of iOS. This is an actually full blown card number. I have it sort of uh, uh, redacted there so you can't actually see it. You can request a new card number. You get the security code, which is updated, gives you an expiration date. So you can actually use this to make purchases. And here you get Safari autofill for Apple Cash. Not only that, but it tells you your balance right there on the autofill button. So you just tap that, it autofills your card number which is super cool. So you can use Apple Cash even without Apple Pay. Now you'll notice the background here that I have on both phones are the same, but 17.3 is on the left, 17.4 on the right. So simulating receiving a call from an unknown number, you see that gray background on the older version, but here on 17.4, it actually takes your current background into account. So Apple launched quantum computer protection in 17.4 for iMessage. And I've talked about this in the previous video, and I highly recommend you watch that video because I explain and break down what PQ3 is. Basically, it is a forward looking way to secure iMessage conversations once quantum computers are powerful enough to crack current encryption protocols. So again, be sure to watch the full explainer video where I break this whole thing down. It's actually really interesting. And iOS 17.4 brings support for game streaming apps, not just for EU users, but for all users on the App Store. That is such a cool new feature. I don't know of any game streaming apps yet, but I'm sure we'll see some soon. So that means you don't have to have every single individual game have its own landing page on the App Store. No, basically you can have sort of like a Netflix for games. And the TV app has updated app channel links. So here, uh, let's pull up the Marvels and you can see that's on Disney plus you see the actual link there you can actually tap that now and that'll take you to the Disney plus section of the TV app whereas in the previous version of iOS you saw it's on Dis Disney plus but there's no way to actually tap that it's not a live link or anything and it doesn't take you to any specific section um, so definitely an improvement you even have the little logo for Disney as well and while we're talking about the TV app, you have an updated how to watch section at the bottom. When you scroll down, you see how to watch here on 17.4 and how to watch on 17.3. And you can instantly see the benefit to 17.4's redesign. It's a more compact experience. You also have details on resolution. And if you rent, it also tells you how many days you have to watch. And you'll notice an updated iCloud glyph in the files app. Not a huge change, but I do appreciate it. Here is the updated glyph. And notice here on 17.3, yeah, it definitely stands out as different. Much more consistent design there for sure. And you get updated App Store user settings. So you can see the difference there. You have purchase, subscription, notifications. Here you have app subscriptions, purchase history and notifications. You even have Game Center link there. So if you go to apps on 17.4, you can see all the various apps uh, that you have uh, downloaded here. And if you go to purchase history, you see all the payments that you've made across mediums. So for instance, apps, uh, subscriptions, movies, Apple Care, even all that. And you can even filter on that as well, uh, which is super handy. So you can go up to showing and you can choose a date range. You can choose various other filters as well. And there's also that direct link to your Game Center profile. And no, don't, do not make fun of my gamer tag. And there's some additional iOS 17.4 bug fixes. It fixes an issue where contact pictures are blank in Find My, and it fixes an issue for dual SIM users where the phone number changes from primary to secondary. And CarPlay gets an update as well. In 17.4, it includes a new way to present Apple Maps data on cars with instrument cluster secondary displays. Previously, that main display presented street level directions, while the instrument cluster would show an overview of your route. But with 17.4, Cars with instrument cluster displays can toggle the main display between a street level view and the route view, which means that turn by turn directions can now appear directly on that instrument cluster behind your steering wheel, which is extremely handy. And 9to5Mac found evidence of new Beats Solo 4 headphones that are imminent. 
So these images were hidden within the iOS 17.4 code, which gives us a nice overall look at the Beats Solo 4. Now, details are still sort of vague right now, but the design looks very similar to the Beats Studio Pro introduced last year. We do know that the Beats Solo 4 will feature a USB-C port instead of micro USB and will work with spatial audio. And you should expect Beats Solo 4 to be available initially in black, blue, and pink. So ladies and gents, that has been a look at iOS 17.4 and what's new. What's your favorite new feature? Let me know down below. Now, of course, there are also the changes that are happening because of the EU regulations. I didn't really touch on those much here in this video, but we have a whole explainer video about that as well. So be sure to check out Fernando's breakdown of those changes in the video link down below in the description for more. And if you're looking for something else interesting to watch, I highly recommend you check out one of these videos right here because something tells me you're gonna like it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.